If you watch some of my other videos, you've seen me drive by or walk by these raised bed gardens many times. And some of you may have thought, well, that looks awfully tall for a raised bed garden. But the older I get, the better idea this seems. My wife and I built these raised bed gardens in 2016, long before I had any ideas of having a YouTube channel. So we don't have any video on it. But as I have done with a lot of my projects in the past, I took lots of pictures. So I'm going to walk you through the features of our raised bed gardens and going through those pictures, show you how I built it and why we built it the way we did. So if you're interested in a raised bed garden design like this, stick around. Now you can make your raised bed garden any heights you like based on the width and number of boards you use from the ground up. We chose to be about on average 24 inches. We're on uneven ground here so it does vary anywhere from 24 inches on this end to 29 inches on that end. Now this one because it's on such uneven ground varies from 19 inches on that back corner all the way to 32 inches high on this corner, which is practically counter height. But for some plantings, that's actually a good height for us. These two raised bed gardens were built to replace one long one that was only one foot tall. We decided we wanted taller versions this time and made two beds, so it was easier to move from one side to the other without having to walk all the way around. We tore down the old one and pushed all the topsoil to the middle to reuse in the new garden beds. All the wood used is pressure treated, starting with the 4x4 four four inch posts that support the 2x8 boards. These posts are buried in the ground between 12 and 16 inches deep, depending on whether we hit rock or not. The dimensions of the beds were chosen to minimize the number of board cuts, so the long side boards are 8 feet long and the end boards are 4 feet long, making the total length 16 feet and 3 inches before the top boards are added. The spacing between the posts is 4 feet. Coated 3-inch deck screws are used to attach the sideboards to the post and to attach the inboards to the sideboards. The sideboards attach at the corner posts with 1.5 inches to spare to leave room for the inboards to sit flush with the corner posts. Three deck screws attach each sideboard to the corner post. Likewise, three deck screws attach each end board to the sideboards but offset enough to avoid hitting the other screws. The end pieces of the 4x4 posts are not buried, but attached to the end boards with deck screws. The main purpose of these is to support the top board on the end and to look nice as well. Here's a look at the end posts from the side. Because of the slope of the ground, some of the pieces had to be cut to follow the lay of the land. Like here. And here. Sometimes I just use a different width of board. Like here. Even though this is pressure treated wood, it is lined with 6 mil plastic sheeting to better protect the wood for the long haul. This is relatively cheap insurance for the longest board life. It is stapled to the top edge. In addition to that, 18 inch aluminum flashing is attached along the top edge on top of the plastic sheeting with roofing nails. Then fold it over and held down with roofing felt nails. The flashing protects the plastic sheeting from damage by gardening tools like our tiller. Since the sideboards may warp, I toenailed them together with nails between the posts, first pre-drilling the holes to avoid splitting the wood, then hammering the nails in. A little flat black paint on top of the flashing for the hell of it and it's time for the top boards. They are made from 2x6 pressure treated lumber with 8 foot lengths in the middle to add rigidity where the sideboards meet in the middle. If I had to do it over, I'd stagger the sideboard so they didn't all join in the middle. The other side pieces are four feet long. The end top boards are four feet seven and a half inches long with the corners cut to 45 degrees. All of the top boards are attached using three inch deck screws. Here's a look at where the deck screws are placed on the corners. And 
here's how they attach where the side pieces meet, positioned to avoid hitting the screws holding the sideboards on. Now this right here is my very favorite feature of this design for a raised bed garden. As you can put your tools, your drink, or plant yourself right here on the side of the bed, be able to reach in and work the bed without having to lean over. And I think that's an awesome feature. If you enjoy these videos, please help me keep them coming by clicking the like button, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.